ladies. Welcome, welcome. Uh, it's kind of a, well, as you saw at the beginning of this video, we are smoked out. <laughs> yes, um, all those years of not smoking is catching up with me. <laughs> In my life, I only smoked two weeks. <laughs> And with asthma, I realized that was not a good thing. <laughs> so, Sisters right now is um, the worst city in Oregon for air quality. Yeah. So the house is closed up. The air conditioning is off. Um, probably this afternoon as it warms up, I'll put a... a a little fan on up here in the beehive but I'm going to be spending the whole day in the beehive in fact it's supposed to be like this for three three days or more and so we are not going to be uh, leaving um, the house <laughs> nor opening the windows <laughs> yeah it it's almost like you want to say I can't take another thing I cannot take another thing. But my friend Dale says, buckle up and bring it. And and so that's what I'm doing today. I'm spending the whole day in the beehive. Um, our trip back um, from Portland was um, uneventful, except for we couldn't uh, come home the way we normally do, because um, that those communities up there... Um, they're not, um, I think most of them are gone. It's, it's even, it's so hard to think about. And, um, our favorite campground that we were at just two weeks ago, we're not sure it's even standing anymore. And it's heartbreaking to think because that is several generations of build for that campground and it was gorgeous. The secret garden, the flowers, the plants, the the cabins, the oh it was just gorgeous. So the thought that in my lifetime it won't be built back up I am I am praying that it is still standing. Although you can't get to it right now. Uh, we actually had our favorite spot that we shared um, on St Stitch Roadies uh, a couple weeks ago, we had our favorite spot um, reserved for Monday. And when you go to their website, it says we're closed. <sighs> I'm okay with we're closed as long as we're standing. Yeah. So all of the communities at the top of the mountain had to evacuate down here through Sisters. And, you know, Sisters is a little town with little facilities as far as um, uh, housing people. And so they, uh, people were all moved over to Redmond, which is to the east of us. And the f animals were diverted to the fairgrounds. And then the Red Cross um, reserved several motels there in Redmond, and people are staying there. Uh, I can't imagine the heartbreak. I just can't imagine the heartbreak. But our ride over, we had to go east to get back over this way. So we had to go through, uh, past Mount Hood. Um, tons of trees were down. The road was clear. And there, uh, the smoke, the way the wind was blowing, there wasn't uh, smoke on the road. And um, you could see some blue sky. Uh, the Indian Reservation, is, Warm Springs, had all of their roads closed, only open to local traffic. So you could only uh, pass through the reservation on the highway. Uh, but we uh, got home and we're grateful for an easy trip home. Uh, what else can I tell you about that? Well, nothing much else. It was... Uh, I know our next trip back up to Portland will be back over our regular route uh, once they have that mopped up a little bit, and um, I know it's going to be heartbreaking. 
I'm not looking forward to that, but I am looking forward to going back to Portland to see my family and and um, be available for um, the new baby that's coming. That is the bright spot of 2020. <laughs> And I, my, my cousin had her baby yesterday. Oh my gosh, he's so adorable. He's so adorable. Oh. So those are the bright spots, aren't they? They're just the bright spots. You can hear the hoarseness in my voice because <laughs> even though everything's closed up, you still can smell the smoke and it still is in here. I, I have a slight headache from all that smoke, but I took my allergy medicine, I've used my inhaler, you know, <laughs> I'm drinking an iced tea with a little bit of caffeine in it to open the bronchioles. So today is going to be a kind of a crazy day. And let me tell you that um, <laughs> I know I am not everyone's cup of tea. I am all over the board. But if I am not your cup of tea, it's okay. I I, I'm okay with you moving on. You do not have to share with me why I'm not your cup of tea. I can do without that conversation. <laughs> it's always amazing to me when someone decides to share with you why they don't like you. <laughs> what a hoot. <laughs> but I'm going to start off with um, some haul... Uh, once I got back, um, the next day I had to go into Bend. Luckily, I went into Bend that day because the air was uh, smoky but not not in the uh, dangerous zone. And I had to grocery shop. I went to um, my friend Robin's house. Uh, Robin is one of the people in my bubble. And I went there to raid her stash for Hexi fabric. And, um, and then she showed me what she was working on, which forced me to go to Joanne's. <laughs> I'll share that with you. <laughs> and then back home again. <laughs> but I'm glad I went because it, there's no leaving the house for the next three, four days. Yeah. So what happened there? Well, let me start with, um, you can see up here, I have my last two hexes all done. Uh, they are, uh, the theme was summer. This week's theme is vacation, so I'm going to be working on that today. That's one of my agendas today is to prep the fabric for that. Uh, I love, I just love those. There's something so satisfying about, oh, I got, I got something done. <laughs> um, so th today I'm going to work on that, which brings me to when I was at Robin's house, I went through her stash and I just raided all kinds of little motif fabrics um, for future hexes. You know, I don't know what the future themes will be, but I have a nice selection. And... That led me to going to Joanne's because she was working on pillowcases. And what she got at Joanne's was um, glow-in-the-dark flannel fabric for pillowcases. And so I had, I had kids in my life that need glow-in-the-dark flannel pillowcases. And it's 30% off right now at Joanne's. So this is one of them. Can you imagine glow in the dark? <laughs> Here's the second one. All those little skeletons. And then here's stars. And there are stars on there that are glow in the dark. So that will be for Halloween. <laughs> she also has finished uh, one of her grandchildren's um, cross-stitch Christmas stockings and she's doing the Shepherd Bush one Parker and Richard and I also am doing those and so um, we went when we were at Joann's we were picking the backing fabric for that and 
it was also on sale and this is a woven uh, it just looks absolutely perfect with the stockings we'll have to line it with SF 101 when we do construct those stockings but that's fun before I left for Portland I went to the stitching post because uh, I had a coupon and we know how we feel about coupons so I bought another bottle of Frey check because this is so handy for me in my cross stitch world can't do without my Aurifil in that you know kind of um, neutral kind of color needed some more hexi fabric yes these are fish bones I'll move that to that pile picked up extra blades because I realized it felt like I was cutting through wood the last time I cut fabric I'm going to be doing um, Sue Spargo's squash squad uh, block uh, which is a free pattern on uh, Instagram that will be coming up in the near future. And so I decided to pick up this GIMP. I don't know. It looks awesome. <laughs> the color is awesome. And since I'm on a hexy, hexy addiction right now, I picked up a packet of Kismet by Valerie Wells in the little two and a half inch blocks for hexies. So that's what I got at the Stitch and Post before I left for Portland. But when I came back, I had some mail. <laughs> I got this cute little box. Now I know. I don't know what I ordered, but by the size of it, I would say that this is two and a half inch squares for hexies. But is that not the cutest little wrap? It's by Jane and Fancy, making every day a little bit fancy. Look at that sweet little card. So Jane and Fancy are an Etsy shop. And I will put the link in the description. I hope I will remember to put the link in the description. But if not, it's janeandfancy.etsy.com. So let's see what I ordered. Someone must have been a sailor because they are an excellent knot tire. Wow, this is a fancy knot, too. Oh, this is a free spirit Denise Schmidt Modern Solids. Now, won't that be perfect for hexes? Oh my gosh. Okay, I think I'm getting a nice little hexy pile that'll last me through the next year. I'm going to save this little card. It is too sweet. I started to panic. I started to panic because I, you know, I only bought two yards of the background fabric for my hexes. You know, it's this this fabric. And I started thinking, oh, I, I should buy two more yards just to be on the safe side because what if I run out? Isn't that the dilemma of the quilter? And so I went back to the stitching post when I bought that little bag of goodies to buy Two more yards of it. There's a, this is the issue we have. It was gone. Not a piece left. When, when you 
love something, you should just buy like five yards of it. I mean, what the heck? So since they didn't have it, I started panting, panicking. So I went online to look for it because it is a um, um, art gallery fabric, art gallery studio fabric, and it's called Raise the Volume. I thought it was, I thought it was a topography, but it's sound waves. So I went online and found a shop and um, called Needle Down Fabrics. Yeah, Needle Down Fabrics. Isn't that cute? But, you know, you got free shipping. <laughs> you got free shipping if you ordered $35 worth of stuff. So I had to order $35 worth of stuff. <laughs> How crazy. I mean, I don't know. So I got two more yards of that. And then look at what else I bought. I just thought this might be so cute for the Hexies. Because look at that little beehive. Is that the cutest thing? I mean, that fabric is so freaking cute. So you can go to Needle Down Fabrics. And then, that still didn't quite reach my free shipping. So then I found this fabric. Because I actually even think this not only would be a, a great uh, project bag, but the eyes could be the center of a hexi. Because look at that fabric. And I actually have a cross stitch that I'm going to be making for one of my family members that's an owl. And this could be... Well, I probably would frame that, so I don't think I would actually need this on the back. But Look at those penetrating eyes. Yeah. Needle Down Fabrics. I will put their link. I'll save all these papers so I can put their link in the description. I kind of went overboard this month, and now I'm cutting my back the rest of the month. It seems like you wake up in the morning... And the other foot drops. How many feet does one person have? And I started worrying about my favorite peeps who are independent business people. And I know that we all can't do, we, we, can't, we can't individually hold up all of these businesses, but we can individually help a little bit on your favorites, you know. And so I started thinking that I hadn't ordered anything from Old World Quilt Shop. And, you know, I, I still am grieving that the shop had to close, that they've gone totally online. But just because the shop went totally online, it's the same people behind the shop. And so I went on their le uh, website, Old World Quilt Shop, and I looked through what was kitted, and I found something that I I want to make, and I want to make it into a pillow. But what is not to love about a crane design? And this can be a Christmas pillow on my couch. Isn't that adorable? And the wool that came with it is absolutely scrumptious. If there's one thing that Old World Quilt Shop knows is their wool. And I just saw that they have a whole bunch of new bundles. Uh, I mean, they, they're they dying their own wool there. And they have a whole bunch of new bundles of colors available. So this has to be um, a need to start in October so that I can have it for Christmas. But because Monique is so adorable and she pays attention, <laughs> she must pay attention, because included in my package, <laughs> I 
I have to laugh. Thank you. Thank you, Moni. A hexy pack. A little two and a half inch pack. Isn't that hysterical? I just love it. And it's Country Christmas. Oh, and it is... Oh. Thank you. Thank you. This is Country Christmas. It's a Moda fabric. It's a Bunny Hill design. And I am going to definitely... My hexy pile is really, really big. <laughs> so... That is all I have to share with you. I wanted to tell you that the that I have two giveaways to send out and that they won't get mailed out until the air clears up and I can actually leave my house. My mailbox is probably going to be stuffed, but I am not going to go. Uh, I do not even want to open my garage door to take my car out because uh, you can just smell the smoke in the garage more than even in the house and so I just know if I open the door it'll just come rolling in. So that'll be a while and then later this video we'll do a drawing for chopsticks the pattern okay. So today is going to be um, a lot of editing for G because I'm going to stop and start the video and, and let him edit it all together. My plan is to prep my hexes to layer the baby quilt because my cousin had her baby yesterday and the quilt is not quilted so that has to happen um, and if I can get those two things done today that would be that would be a great great accomplishment <laughs> and who knows what else because you know this is this is not about a calm, methodical um, quilting channel. This is like uh, the carnival quilt channel. <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. And then I'm going to share with you some um, quilt, other quilt YouTube channels that um, I have found that are just lovely and just like on uh, Stitch Roadies where I watch floss tube channels there are channels out there I have discovered recently in quilting that are lovely also. So I'm going to share those with you. So stay tuned. Well, I got a little distracted because when I um, went in my uh, closet, my stash closet, to look for... Uh, some specific hexi fabric because as you know I have that big pile but this week's theme was vacation and in my mind I had a I don't know I, I in that pile I just didn't see it yet so I thought well I'll look through my stash and then I got distracted by the the clutter the clutter was distracting me and I said I I just need to get this organized and so um I spent about 30 minutes organizing it and I decided that all those little piles of um, hexi fabrics and everything were driving me crazy. So I had this bag, this, uh, this bag that um, was sitting on the floor in my closet and it is a beautiful, beautiful padded bag with bees that my a dear friend Marilyn made for me and so um, I decided this is going to be my hexi bag. <laughs> so all so far all the hexi fabric is in there and I'm going to uh, keep it all together so I can kind of dig through it. And then I chose two uh, fabrics for my hexis because this week is um, vacation and since my sister lives in wine country, which is always a great vacation, I chose this little motif that says wine country, and then I found this fabric that has all the names of the different wines on it. So I'm going to put that around it. And then I grew up uh, in my teen years, uh, well, I grew up on the ocean, but in my teen years, my uh, 
parents were diehard sailors, and so um, a lot of time spent out on the Monterey Bay. And so I found this little piece of sailboat fabric that was sent to me by Monique from um, Old World Quilt Shop, and I found this beautiful little print in my stash. So now I'm just prepping. I'm going to be prepping as we talk. And in my hexi box, I found this little, um, you know, you put it on your finger, and so you can turn the fabric without um, getting burnt, <laughs> which is a good thing. And so I'm going to start prepping these. My And I saw these hanging on the wall at the stitching post, so I know they have them. Um, I'm in between time trying to catch up on some of my floss tubers as I work. So this thing, you know, it's got a long fingernail so you don't um, have to worry about getting burned because let me tell you this little uh, steam uh, steam fast iron is like holy cow it really and since I've never been a person that had um, long fingernails <laughs> That would be, uh, I was always digging in the dirt too much. And then at the hospital, um, you weren't allowed to have uh, those fake nails or long fingernails because, you know, they're a source for germs. So that was over. But I remember one time years ago, I... Um, uh, one of my friends uh, that I worked with convinced me to get those fake nails. So I went down and I did it. <gasps> one day. I lasted one day. It actually made me feel claustrophobic, like my hands were heavy. And I, I couldn't stand it, and I peeled them off. And I didn't realize that you're not supposed to peel them off. That... Um, that you damage your nails, and which I did. So Bordeaux, Bordeaux, boy, that's gonna be, that's gonna be a cute little hexy. The smoke is just getting thicker and thicker. Ugh, I tell you, but it's thick smoke all over the state. My poor daughter-in-law up in Portland, the pregnant one, she says it's horrible at their house. Just horrible. But I have to say that everyone, it seems like everyone in, in this side of the country is in the smoke. I have to admit something to you all. <laughs> oh my gosh. I signed up for a quilt block of the month. <laughs> I know, it's crazy, it's crazy, like I need another block of the month, but I, I'm telling you, I just needed something to smile about, and this actually, here I am, I, I'm going through my whole justification thing, this quilt actually is a block that I know many of you probably have made, but I have not, and I've always wanted to make it, and it doesn't actually start till March of next year, so 
I feel like it's one of the first things I get to look forward to next year, you know. But you have to sign up now, and it's through Fat Quarter Shop, and it's uh, the Swoon Block. And I know I have saved on Pinterest all kinds of pictures about Swoon Blocks, because they are amazing. And I've heard they're kind of a little bit labor-intensive, but it's with um, French General Fabrics. I guess I should say it louder. French General Fabrics. Yeah. It didn't take me long to jump down that rabbit hole. So if any of you want to play with me, You can. What's going to be fun about this particular um, hexi block is there'll be six choices of wine, <laughs> and you'll get to pick your favorite. I got this little finger thing here that is proving to be extraordinary. Um, for this job from uh, Traditional Primitives, Missy Carpenter, the Hexi Queen. And after all, she has been doing hexies for a long time. It's kind of fun. And I don't I must be getting used to it, but I'm not smelling the smoke inside as much as I did when I first got up this morning. Um, I swear the houses a street over are starting to disappear. Zinfandel. Uh, my favorite wine, oh yeah, this one's Chianti. Um, my favorite wine is um, Cabernet Sauvignon. <laughs> Although, I have to admit, I am not... I usually only like wine in the winter. <laughs> For me, it's almost like a seasonal thing. And it's, uh, and I have a venter uh, right down the street. At the end of my street is um, the owner of Bergstrom Winery, who is over in the valley. Although he is retired. His sons, his children are still running the winery. Let's see what this is, huh? Every so often I have to go down and ask G what's going on with the fires. It actually has made me really think about planning Chianti. Uh, and I did buy um, some like big plastic totes and um, I'm going to pack things in it, you know, like, um, there are some photo albums that I, um, haven't looked at in years, but, you know, you treasure them because it, it's your family history and stuff, and, and so I'm going to pack those up and, um, move them up to Portland, uh,
and then just kind of think about what to organize, you know, in case you had to um, bug out, because, you know, there are places that are evacuating here in Oregon that I know the people are going, what? Like it never entered their mind, because it's not, it's not a place that you normally think you'd get burned out of. It's, it really is an extraordinary, extraordinary event. So it's made me think about, okay, I need to um, have a certain things stored someplace that's safer than here, because here is not safe. Um, if you look at Google Maps of Sisters, and I've said this before, it looks, you can't even see the town of Sisters um, for all the trees. And um, although we're in kind of like a meadow area because we were originally part of the ranch, and um, so this was all pasture. There's the only trees here in this neighborhood are ones that we have planted. Um, still, with the wind blowing, we aren't protected. I mean, there's a whole forest two streets of, well, two streets away. There's a whole forest. And um, so I think it would be wise for us to think about that. And just to identify emotionally, so, you know, you're not, I mean, some of these poor people, they were like, someone's banging on the door at midnight, telling them to get out. And, um, and then they literally only left with, um, with the clothes on their back. And so it might help, and, and there are going to be situations like that, but it might help if you, not only for insurance purposes, take photographs of your most precious items, but also it emotionally and mentally identifies them so that when you get on that knock on the door, and if you have a half hour or something, you already know in your heart what would break your heart if if it was lost forever, you know. Because there's certain things that are, in my mind, irreplaceable. You know, my father-in-law was a um, weaver, knitter, crocheter, and we have... Uh, some of his things and and one of his beautiful weavings where he dyed all the yarn is hanging on the wall and I would be heartbroken because we could never replace that you know and so you know that's the thing I'm a sap when it comes to family history I mean I know that there are some people that are, are easily can get rid of stuff when it comes to family history, I am bordering on the hoarder part, you know. I Savignon Blanc. Okay, so we have one hexi prepped. I'm going to prep, let you go for a little bit, and I'll be back in a short while, and I'm going to prep the other one. So I thought I'd show you that I have my hexes all prepped for this week's theme on uh, Spring Daisy Stitchery was vacation. So I'm quite happy with my choices. Now I just have to stitch these all together and then stitch them to the background. So I have now moved on to layering the baby quilt. 
I tell you, those babies won't wait till I get the quilt done. So our little Luke, who is my cousin's baby, was born yesterday, her first baby. I am so excited. But now it means, you know, I got to get on the wagon here and um, layer this uh, baby quilt up. And I'll show you just what I do. Um, but I was distracted by the most wonderful uh, conversation. My friend Arianne, who um, lives on the opposite side of the United States from me, she lives in New York City, gave me a call to check up on how we're doing. And I am telling you, it is getting thicker by the minute. I am not even going to poke my head outside for the next three days. Um, yeah, but uh, she, I always love talking to her. She makes me laugh. Um, and she is the creator of this wonderful needle roll that I am going to be prepping this week because it has an otter on it. <laughs> And I'll put her links down. She has an Etsy shop. She has a blog. Um, she has a YouTube channel. And um, just for your own information, um, her YouTube channel is called On the Other Hand. And it's one of those wonderful safe places to land. Even if you don't want to do wool stitching, you'll just want to sit there and listen to her. She has the most fabulous voice. Her blog is where art and life meet because she has been deep into the art and creative world of all kinds. She has an Etsy shop and a jewelry site because she does hand design jewelry too. But I'll put that all in the description box and then we shall... be sharing the prepping of my needle roll. <coughs> so I measured out my back backing fabric and it's birch trees. Love it, love it. And I am too old to be kneeling on a floor and pinning a quilt. I used to do that all the time. And I, I'm too old to bulldog clip the backing to a table and bend over and pin a quilt together. I'm just too old for that whole process of layering a quilt. Which brings me to fusible batting. So I buy fusible batting and this fusible batting is uh, heirloom fusible cotton batting. It's a um, crib size. You know, you kind of get it all, it's, you know, wound up really tight. But you got to open it up and get it relaxed. And it has a little bit of fusible on both sides of it. So it's going to stick to your backing and your front. Because I'm going to be quilting this one myself, I don't have to have that three inches on all the sides <laughs> because I had to piece this backing together and um, yeah, you know how that goes. There's barely enough to fit the back. Let's see what we got here. So I kind of open it up and let it relax. I am wondering, is this going to be wide enough? Isn't that the crazy thing, huh? If it isn't, I have a solution for that. Let's see here. Ooh. 
Barely, barely. I mean, it is. <laughs> it is exactly <laughs> the same size. But that's okay. We shall make it work. So have you been having a fun day today? Let me just see if it'll work better this way. But then my direction on my... I'm just talking out loud here. You know how that goes. Yeah. No, because then I have to... see what that says. I am talking out loud, huh? Oh, okay, so it's 60 inches one way. Oh yeah, so let's see what's going to happen here at the bottom. No, I think, I think I'm going to want it to go the other way. Yeah. Always before you start ironing, <laughs> you check it out. And you got to get all the wrinkles out of it, because then you get, you get your full, full, with because when they wrap this thing up they have wrapped it tight and it has a lot of of wrinkles in it. I got my iron heating up. Okay. And so all I'm going to do is Kind of smooth it all out. Boy, that is just enough. Just enough. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Call me crazy. <laughs> but I'm going for it. Okay. I'm going to just steam. I have my iron on steam. And the good thing about this is that um, if you got a wrinkle or something, you can just pull it out and um, re-iron it and it'll stick to your fabric again. pulling all the wrinkles out of the batting because there and you can look uh, look up underneath it and you can peel it back more if you want to if you got a big old wrinkle sometimes I'll get all the way to the end and I'll feel a, a big wrinkle in it and you just peel it back up and go back to that point That's the thing about 
taking classes and workshops and such is you meet you meet people you might not have ever had a chance to meet um, and Ariane's somebody that I met in Arizona at a um, Sue Spargo uh, workshop it's the Misa um, uh, which is put on, <clears throat> that's the Madeline Island uh, sponsored workshops. They do all kinds of workshops. Uh, for, uh, it has to do with all kinds of art. Um, so photography, painting, writing, any kind of, anything creative. And um, uh, Sue Spargo uh, is one of the uh, stitching or quilting uh, instructors that is part of that program every year and I met Ariane there and <laughs> it was a friendship made in heaven let me tell you because um, she is very very kind sweet talented oh so talented and um, I am happy to call her friend and so um, that's the part that I think is sad about uh, is about uh, this uh, COVID uh, thing. So hold on one second. Sorry for the interruption. My sister was calling and you know, I don't know about you, but right now when someone in the family calls, I drop everything and answer it because I never know what's going on. <laughs> We are so gun shy right now about everything, aren't we? It's um, and sure enough, one of my aunts went into the hospital. She's doing okay, but um, yeah, you just you know, when family calls, video stops. <laughs> I went ahead and I ironed the backside, making sure that. Um, all the wrinkles were out. I lifted it up and then laid it back down and ironed it on the back. So now both sides are fused onto the batting. And the next step will be to start quilting it. Uh, Got to set up my um, Sweet 16. I'm not sure. I'm probably going to have to probably going to have to talk a little bit sweet talk to her because I have not fired her up in a long time, but uh, that's what I'm going to do next. I got to get this baby quilt quilted. That baby was born yesterday, which means this has to be quilted and bound and put in the mail. And anything that goes in the mail takes a while now. So um, that's my agenda for the next three days that I am at home. But in the meantime, I did the random comment for this fabulous pattern by Jaybird Designs Chopsticks. And the winner is Pat Nordahl. Glad you feel better. I find that listening to a kindred spirit certainly helps me. Except, I must confess, I cannot use chopsticks worth a blankety blank. I have joined a group from Red Thread Studio that we are focusing on getting UFOs finished. I hear you, Pat. I find this helpful to be accountable to someone. Now that I'm alone, I have no one to ask, is this pile of fabric supposed to be something? <laughs> oh, haven't we all been there? <laughs> or are we just admiring it? Right now, I'm working on a quilt for the new great-grandson due in November. Congratulations! The shower is 9.25. Oh, you got to get working. So I am really concentrating on just this at the moment. This comment is starting to look like Gone with the Wind in length. I, too, can ramble on in length about small things. Have a good week and be safe. Thank you so much, Pat, for hanging out with me. And so if you email me your mailing address, when the smoke clears, 
I will drop it in the mail. <laughs> and that email address is on the description box. And also, it's Wooly Mammoth with an IE, Wooly with an IE, Mammoth1, the number one, at gmail.com. Um, and then I'll send this out along with um, the other two items that I'm waiting to send out that now I have to wait until it's going to be okay to go outside. I, I, I know I've said this before that it is hard to believe that it can get any thicker, but it is thicker. I think someone texted me that it's like the air index is like 526. So I'm going to leave you with this this card I drew today with our little Enzo. And <laughs> it has got to be good. That's all I got to say. My curiosity experiment said, what else is possible that I haven't yet considered? I am only considering positive things. And you are part of my positive world. Thank you for stopping by, and I will check in with you later this week. Hopefully, the smoke will have cleared, and we will be on the road over the mountain again. Thank you. Bye.